Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and we follow the order of service that has been printed for this occasion. Uh, a few announcements before we begin our service. Uh, I don't want to forget, it's very important to thank those members who came on Saturday to clean the church outside and inside. So thanks so much. They were nice, and that was wonderful. The nice people came and helped us in this task. That's wonderful. Uh, others announcements. Uh, remember that our strawberry social that will be on July 9th. And there is a paper on, on the back for you, for those who want to help in different areas. So we have a little bit of members at this moment, but we are organizing ourselves here inside and see we could get a few people. So we're going to get a few people from faith as well, so that will help us. So, and we will follow the precautions, you know, regarding COVID-19. So we wear the mask, if those are, you're comfortable wearing the mask, that's okay. And, and do things that you are able to do and, and keep the distance, something like that. So we will organize this because it's very important that we continue and start doing things for the church and, and see, bring the word, not only for us, but as well for other people, other members who might come to the church. Uh, and finally, for this week, um, I'm going to Amherstburg. We have a pastor circuit meeting over there. It's close to, to Windsor. Um, that's going to be a, a long day. But anyway, so and then we we have a meeting uh, at 7. I think the council meets at, 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 uh, at 7. Council. council. It's not there. So we meet this one. But anyway, it's going to be 16 to 17. So it's not here, but <laughs> that's going to be a long day anyway. So, and office hours here uh, at, at Grace, just in case you need to speak with me or phone me, I am here at 9 a.m. And then I could do this in the afternoon as well, here at Grace. So, it's wonderful to, to be here in the house of the Lord. Let us worship Him and thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for what He has done for us through Jesus Christ. And, and let us begin uh, at this moment uh, singing our first hymn, Love Divine. All loves exceeding.
Please rise. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. God's grace knows no bounds. Through the sacrifice of his Son, the bridegroom of the church, he makes us his holy bride. Anticipating the heavenly wedding feast, let us seek God's grace now and call on him for forgiveness and mercy. We all speak. Almighty God, have mercy on us, for we cannot help ourselves. Forgive us all that we have done in the past, give us grace in this present time, and lead us to serve you and love one another in the future and on to the eternity you have promised. Jesus promised the disciples, your sorrow will turn into joy. And he promises the spring of water of life without payment. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with three stanzas from him, by grace I am saved.
take it responsibly. O God, you made the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear God's word. The first lesson this morning, for this fifth Sunday of Easter, comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. And uh, in this passage, we hear that God, in a vision, God convinces Peter that the Gentiles, which include us as non-Jewish, be baptized into the one true church. And hear what uh, Luke records for us here in Acts chapter 11. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, by no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times. And all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me. And we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa, and bring sorry, and, and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We speak responsibly to that God one. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He, he has put all, all things, things under his feet. feet. Our epistle lesson for this morning comes from the last book in our canon, Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. And here we, John sees a vision of the new Jerusalem adorned as a bride for her husband, that is Christ, coming from heaven. You hear what uh, John records for us here, Revelation 21 beginning at verse 1. 
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. with a verse. Hallelujah! We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah! If, if anyone, anyone loves me, he will keep, keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come, come to him and make our home with him. With him. Hallelujah! The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 22. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Please rise to hear the Gospel. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will see me no longer. And again a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourself, what I meant by saying, A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will, sorrowful, you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is given birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. Let us all confess our Christian faith, speaking the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is with the Father and the Son together to worship and glorify, who spoke by the prophets. I believe in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our sermon. mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A difference in Christ this morning we are going to meditate with God's help in the text of Revelation. 
chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. And this is a, a, a reading that people, when read it, get confused. But it's not. When we seek that answer in God's Word, in Jesus Christ, and then we see Revelation as another book that God given, is giving a message there, clearly. And that's what we are going to try this morning with God's help. So let us begin with, Christ is risen, he, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our text for meditation for this day speaks about new creation. It says, Behold, I am making all things new. Our Lord Jesus Christ is making everything new in his death and resurrection. Through him, the new creation has come. Even now, as we speak, we are already a new creation in Christ, you and me. But we all know very well that in ourselves, we are a sinner. Sinful from birth. Sinful from the moment we were conceived and dying every step of the way. But in Christ, we are a new creature. Redeemed, raised up, renewed, resurrected. Behold, I am making all things new. This phrase from the revelation of St. John is found throughout the whole Bible from the beginning till the end. From beginning to the end, again and again. We hear it, that God makes all things new. Right from the third chapter of Genesis, when man fell into sin and sin entered the world, the old creation was ruined. It was finished. It was no longer very good. It had to be replaced. Now we hear the culmination of that at the end of the Bible with the book of Revelation. In the fourth chapter of Revelation, we find God described for the first time. And see this picture from the fourth chapter of Revelation. God is sitting on the throne. God is surrounded by the 24 elders, which are the 12 tribes of the Old Testament and the 12 apostles of the New Testament. As well, he is surrounded by cherubim and seraphim and millions upon millions of other angels. But there are more. Still outside of them are the believers who die in the faith. All of them are singing together in praise to God, holy, holy, holy. It could have been our hymns. Mm -hmm. the, the opening hymn in the morning, I can It doesn't like that, that hymn, but it's beautiful. You see all of them praising God, holy, holy, holy. It's a magnificent descent. Just picture yourself there in the presence of God with all those elders, cherubims, and seraphims, and angels, and brothers and sisters who have died in the faith. Being there is wonderful. And God? What happened with God? Well, God, God does not say, doesn't say a thing. God is silent. Then Revelation tells us about all the plagues of the world. And God is still silent. He does not speak. Finally, at the end of the book, the devil, Satan, is thrown into the abyss, into hell. And God still does not say a word. Friends in Christ, 
all the way to the book of Revelation, God does not open his mouth. We have to go through all that difficulty in life. But that doesn't mean that he's not with us. It's only that he's not speaking. God sits silently on that throne until you come to chapter 21. The chapter 21 that we just read. You come to the end of the book and God gets ready to speak. And what he says, Behold, I am making all things new. That theme is throughout the whole Bible. God is saying this theme in different ways. Let's hear a few of them. I will make a new covenant with you. Another one. I will place in you a new heart. Another one. I will give you a new spirit. There are more. I will give you a new name. More. You will sing a new song. And another one. I will give you new wine. The Apostle Paul says the same thing when he writes, but in another way. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Even here, here, even here today, you hear the same thing as before, that God is making new. We hear today in the epistle reading that the Lord is seated on the throne of the universe and says with the light, Behold, I am making all things new. And as we look through the scripture readings for this Sunday, we see all kinds of new stuff, new things. A new heaven and a new earth. A new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It's not the same old. Same old, but it is all new. Friends, some people do not like newness. They like what is old and comfortable. They want to know what is wrong with the old before they get excited about having something new. They are like the expression which says, if it, if it ain't broke, do not fix it. I am most certainly one of those. And yet, I will tell you, I will tell you what is wrong with the old and the reason for the new. Let us begin with our first reading. What is wrong with this reading is that the, it, this reading did not include everyone. What is said in this reading? Did not include everyone. The Old Testament is most about the nation of Israel. But then Jesus Christ comes and does something new by throwing open the doors of heaven to everyone who will believe. He commands us, go and make disciples of all nations. The Apostle Peter heard the message got the vision, and preach Christ to those who would listen. A message to all nations, all tribes, and languages, and people. Heaven is now for everyone who lives by faith in Jesus Christ, Gentiles and Jews alike. And so the message of Christ goes out. And keeps going out. Keeps going out. That was new. That means that salvation was also for us. Gentile. That means that the victory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over sin, death, and the devil is our victory over sin, death, and the devil. That means that the good news of the message of today's second reading is for us. 
that means that the new heaven and earth are our future home. What's wrong with the old in the second reading is the old heavens and the old earth. The world as we know it. We are in this world. What's wrong with them is that we have filled with death, with sorrow, with crying, with pain, with sickness, and so on. Open your ears and listen. Nobody likes anybody. We fight. We hate. We are angry. We are frustrated. Somebody is doing me dirt, and I am doing dirt to somebody else. Friends in Christ, let's face it. This world is a place of suffering, hurting people. And not just suffering people. The creation itself is in pain and anguish. And who in their right mind could possibly want to stay forever in this old world? So full of sorrow, of pain, where it is one valley of the shadow of death after another. That is why the promise of a new creation has been the constant message of Holy Scripture from almost the beginning, right since the days that sin, death, and the devil came to rule this world and our lives. God created in the beginning, and He is creating in the end. What was made perfect in the beginning is recreated perfect in the end. Paradise lost is now regained because of Jesus. A new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven as a beautiful bride would come down the aisle to her husband. We hear the description of the magnificent vision. We hear what it will be like. We hear who will be there. God in us. And we hear what will not be there. All things of sin, death, and sorrow. Oddly enough, one of the things mentioned that will not be there is the sea. The sea poses a threat to everybody. The sea separates us, divides us through geography and by death meaning that there is nothing to divide humanity any longer. Obviously, there will be no religious tensions. There will be no racial tensions. There will be no language tensions. No political tensions. No gender tensions. For the all will pass away. There will be no need for money and all the grief and trouble and status and separation that it brings. There will be no disease, no quarantine, no hospital work, no old folks in a nursing home. There will be no education. For all we know the Lord, from the smart to the dull, from the strong to the weak, from the confident to the meek. This is the thing that all of the philosophers and all of the social activists dream of, even though they never even came close to achieving it on earth. And yet, this is the place, the future, the promise, the home, the hope that all of the Christians can look forward to. And there will be no death for Christ is risen and the tomb is empty. He lives, and because he lives, so do we. There will be no divide between God and mankind, between God and you. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, 
he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God will himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Dear friends in Christ, there will be nothing to separate you from God. Nothing. There will be no temple of mediation, for we will see the Lord face to face. He will talk directly to us, and we will talk directly to him. Just as Jesus came and dwelt among us for the forgiveness of our sin, many sins, so in the new heaven and earth we will dwell with God in the fullness of what that forgiveness and salvation means. Because of our sin, we have difficulty understanding what this new heaven and new earth are all about. Who can understand? what it means to be fully in the presence of God and having the joy of living with Him. It is too much. It is too much for our simple, sinful brains to handle. But what we can understand is all the negative things about living with God. Or perhaps, better put, all the things that will not be there. This new creation, there are a lot of things left out. A bunch of no mores. No more death. No more sorrow. No more crying. No more pain. No more goodbyes. No more partings. No more trips to the cemetery. An eternal togetherness. All because of the one who sits on the throne. All because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Lamb who was slain, the Lamb who has taken away the sins of the whole world. He is filled with joy as He makes new creation that He had once made. He knows very well how to transform the agony of this world into the joy of heaven. For He has passed through, through separation from His Father, he has lived in our death, in our sorrow, in our crying, and our pain. And he has passed through them all into a joy that never ends. From cross to glory. And so he knows how to bring us through much trial and tribulation into the kingdom of God. So, is there anything new under the sun? Yes, Yes, there is. New life, new promises, new love, new heaven, and new earth. Thanks be to God. Because Jesus rose from the dead and now sits on the throne, we are his new people, and he is our God who wipes our tears, destroys death, and throws out pain and suffering. And these words, are trustworthy and true. Thanks to God. Amen. We continue singing our offering.
Please rise. Let us pray to God on behalf of the church and all people in their various needs. You told Peter, what God has made clean, do not call common. Remember those people on the margins of society. O oh Lord, provide caring people and institutions, open doors of opportunity, and free them from the result of their past poor decisions. Bridegroom of the church, and you mercy, hear our prayer. Peter and the others recognized that they could not stand in God's way. Guide the church, clergy, and lay leaders here and around the world to seek your will. Lord Jesus, working together creatively to find new ways to spread the gospel in accord with your will. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, in John's vision, you proclaim, Behold, I am making all things new. Graciously work through the talents and knowledge of meteorologists, naturalists, engineers, and visionaries as they seek to find ways to renew the health of this planet. Grant that seed time and harvest, sun and rain produce bountiful harvest, that we all rejoice in your many blessings. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, over all, as you foretold often, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. So we see injustice, oppressions, constant warfare, and unrest in many nations. Rise up, wise leaders, intent on serving their citizens, police, and first responders focus on maintaining the peace and armed forces determined to establish calm. Bright realm of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise the Savior, by the faith given us by the Holy Spirit, we look forward to the wedding feast of the Lamb who will, who will end mourning, crying, and pain. Before we enter the time of rejoicing, we bring the petitions of people near and dear to us as they call out in sorrow through tears and enduring pain. We remember this day Howard, who is recuperating from surgery, Cassie, Susan, Jean, Anne, who is facing some health issues, and as well be with Mike. We pray for Reinhardt and Marianne for Ridva, for Marcus and Risto, for Lisette and family, for Barbara, and for Geraldine. We pray also for those we name in our hearts and minds. As fits your gracious plan, give them peace, joy, and relief. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, your son prayed for his people before his death, that they might be sustained in life and faith. Hear our prayers on behalf of all the families of these congregations, especially for Andy, Dan, and Lauren, for Albert, and for Barbara. Lord, bless their life, be with them in success and adversity, and preserve them in repentance, faith, and hope all the days of their lives. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy Lord, all times are in your hands. Look with favor upon Michael, as he celebrates his birthday this week. Grant that he continues growing in wisdom and grace and confidence that you walk with him. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. Lord of compassion, you came to this earth to bear our griefs and carry our sorrows. We are grieved by many things, most often by the changes in this world and by the loss of the people and things we hold dear. We pray for Janko and his family who grieve the death of Janko's mother. Remind all of us that you are our greatest treasure, our dearest friend, our faithful Savior. Bridegroom.
will of the church in your mercy hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you on behalf of Ukraine and all the nations in the world who suffer war. Grant them a strength of faith. Remind them that no matter the circumstances, you are with them. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting that you have heard us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the hands of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witness of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company in heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Amen. Us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please rise. The body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the strength and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and with great joy. Amen. Amen. We continue singing the non divinity.
to give them thanksgiving. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Give us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may meet together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. I will close in him. Lord, take my hand and lead me. As you serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God bless you. Take care. Go out and serve the Lord.
Yeah, four. Four. <laughs> 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 I bought a little greenhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah,